Hello, and welcome to our NH Connect Senior Future Energy Asia 2023. I'm delighted to have sitting next to me Pradeep Kumar Dash, Chairman and Managing Director of the Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, and Mida, coming down to the studio to talk about the renewable energy industry in India. Pradeep, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Um, now, India has witnessed a fast paced growth in its renewable energy industry um, over the last couple of years. Why do you think this has happened and what has fueled this growth? First of all, let us understand renewable energy development is not a choice, necessity, it is a compulsion. We have to ensure the planet is available for our next generation to come children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. Because in the pursuit of energy generation and energy uses, we all went on generating, generating, transmitting and distributing. We somehow missed to focus on looking at the impact of those generation, how much carbon we have generated in the meantime. So of course, uh, the, of the COP countries, they have already taken a commitment and uh, in COP26, five Panchamit target, our Honorable Prime Minister has already said, in which India has planned to have by 2030, 500 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity installation in the country and 50% uh, of usage of energy from non-fossil sources and also to bring down the CO2 level of 2005 level at 45% reduction in that. And we have a net zero target of reaching by 2070. So this bold commitment with bold action. Government has taken series of initiatives. And if you see last nine years from 2014 onwards, there has been a rapid growth of RE development in India. That is the reason India is the first screwing uh, RE capacity addition in the world. And within India, Irida is fastest growing non-banking finance company, the largest in India and a uh, couple of inputs we are having that uh, probably we are largest in the world as far as technically speaking, non-banking finance company. You may be having bigger other finance or funds and other things. But non-banking finance space, maybe we are the last. And what do you think some of the key success factors that it um, enable them to play such an active role? No. See, uh, we are there since 36 years. We have quite a lot of huge experience with us. Any industry has a cycle. Ups and downs happens. So we have the learning experience of downs and we have the learning experience of ups in the past. So in during the up, we are not complacent. During the down, we are not drained out. Like during COVID period, when the entire globe was struggling and worried and depressed, during that period, we focused on business. We did a lot of capacity building programs, not only for our internal employees. We are hardly 160 employees. It is very easy. We are very small, very easy to conceive the idea and uh, deliver the result. And we have the, we improved the faster turnaround time of loan application to loan sanction and disbursement. In a renewable project, unlike fossil, during construction period, the interest component comes to around 25% of the project cost. But post commissioning, it becomes just reverse. 75% becomes your interest cost. So we being a financer, we have to very play a critical role to reduce the construction period time by supporting timely manner financing to them. And most of the, in India particularly, the early development components, whatever is mostly import centric. So once the developer committed through LCs or other modes, they have to pay on time, they have to honor, and so that they can speed up the project execution. Post commissioning, what we differentiated in our interest rate matrix, pre-commissioning is something X, and post commissioning it x minus y. Whatever is de risked because of the commissioning, that de risk premium which was loaded earlier, that we have offloaded. So, understanding the intricacies of the issues of the developer and challenges in the sector, 
we uh, introduce a lot of innovative financing products which required for them and remember it is point to note this learning also we took from them every quarter post publication of our financial result we call for a stakeholders interaction meeting we understand from the them the challenges and issues then we capture them in our policy procedure keeping in mind the broader framework of best quality corporate governance today as a nbfc our governance is, has become a point of reference for others that is our strength great to hear and and as uh, you know the energy landscape evolves renewable energy energy transition coming in what areas are you going to be looking to focus on mainly in the future absolutely pertinent question because if you allow me to make a demarcation there are two kind of renewable energy one is established other one is emerging your question pertain to emerging 20 years back which is established now they were emerging also so we have come across the ups and downs during emerging time those learning we are using now and now the emerging area two broader things uh, broader emerging challenges is there and areas are there one is this green hydrogen and hydrogen derivative like green ammonia methane and other things which is going to completely play a game changer in the renewable energy space in the emerging area our assessment is 50% of energy is going to come from that space so it's a huge market and uh, then is your offshore wind is a huge challenge in a traditional wind project what cost five times will be in offshore wind and the timeline of project execution will be almost three to four times so that means the project construction period is longer unlike what established ari was earlier and the capital investment would be pretty huge i do not have any hesitation to accept here that whatever erada was hand holding the kind of net worth base it was pretty small but the rate in which renewable has grown in india and globally and expected to grow because of the compulsion we need many readers to be there to play but in order to address immediately the issues we have enhanced our net worth base in last 3 years it is more than double and again we have planned our uh, ipo we are expecting in q2 that is uh, maybe before september this year to hit the market and we are planning to go to the global market also we had planned earlier but the issue what was planned earlier was appearing little small and now we have gone and government of india has already granted approval for enhancing the size around 25% will be offloaded in the market will be in the public will be uh, reaching out to the global uh, players and i am expecting this additional equity infusion that is going to enhance further the equity base by which we can become a key player in hand holding this larger amount of investment landscape in the emerging technology what i was referring despite that i feel personally and our my team also feel this may not be sufficient we have already signed mou with our government banks in uh, india and in a similar manner we are expecting to sign with bigger agencies so that we can joint lend our knowledge and experience and our commitment and conviction that will be the biggest resource to them they have the financial base so we can join hand together and go ahead and one more thing all along india wo ireda was doing the support in india time has come now india is quite developed in established area india's experience and expertise can be shared in the underdeveloping economies or underdeveloped economies undeveloping economies there we can play a big brother role and support them fair amount second in the emerging also the kind of size of investment required we need to take the support of uh, multilateral agencies and developmental banks what they did 30 years back in india through irida you know many agency they supported us they preferred their lending through us they have full trust and uh, confidence in our governance 
and deliveries and i am expecting again in the emerging space they are going going to come and handhold us also and uh, one more thing we should not depend on others for development since it is a asia energy forum future asia energy forum all the asian countries governments all the corporates or the citizens everybody should passionately focus on re development by whatever means they can do rather than expecting only the developing economy to come forward and support that no that is not required because locally we can do quite a lot see in india government of india has taken a resolution to have self independent by making india all the components with respect to the established area as well as emerging area by 2030 not only that we will be in a position to export to the other countries for their re development through technological innovation manufacturing capacities so government of india has announced a fair amount of productive link incentives not only in re in other sectors also see even if you keep on developing re if the other sector who are consuming energy today they will not go for energy transition in their energy uses and also the individual citizens and the households they do not shift from their energy uses from fossil to non fossil our objective of becoming net zero will not happen in time this is what the basta is stuff and i um really think they know all about it um and i just really appreciate you coming down to the energy the next year thank you thank you very much for inviting us and uh, we have participated in uh, uh january in uh, world future energy program in abu dhabi we are the only government company who participated in that event uh today i have just came before some time to the program i do not know exactly any other government agency from government of india has participated in this or not at least we have taken a resolution to promote re development through awareness also if we have fair amount of awareness with clarity so many things can happen easily and wherever possible financing also we are opening shortly our office in gift city maybe in a separate subsidiary company to support foreign projects also so that means we are now expanding our support activities to foreign activities so that we can borrow in foreign currency lend in foreign currency and go for a natural hedging today even though we are getting concessional lending from the other agencies in india the lender cost of that product is not becoming competitive vis a vis the domestic market so ideal would be we should look for a situation where there will be natural hedging we borrow in foreign currency lend in foreign currency so that initiative we have already started and coming back to this uh, offshore wind and green hydrogen where a lot of a fair amount of investment will be required in infra our central bank that is reserve bank of india they have granted us infra status nbfc we are amending our object clause very soon to capture infra so that we can support infra and re but we will not be diverting from re we will be doing the infra connected to re only thank you very well that's really interesting to hear yeah thanks a lot for coming down thank you thank you very much thanks so much for watching and i look forward to reading more studio interviews in the show floor in the coming days Thank you.